With this deal closed now, I think I deserve a spot on the Tesla board. That's a crazy idea, Gavin, but obviously an order of magnitude better than Ross Gerber. I, 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 I appreciate just, you saying that. We were just uh, talking yeah. about that. that. That guy is charismatic, but I, thought, I don't know what he's thinking. Plus, he talks yeah. so much about me in 2021 and even suggested meet Kevin yeah, as he's governor. Got quite the ego is what it is. Might as well be Earl, right? He obviously doesn't actually own 100 million worth of Tesla. That's what I'm saying. Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. So if you didn't already know, that video was indeed a deep fake. All respect to Ross Gerber, but that had me laughing this morning, so I had to share it. I'll be honest, I've been thinking a lot about Tesla's upcoming investor day next week on Wednesday. I usually try to keep my expectations low, but they keep getting higher and higher, and here's why. For a long time now, one of the main focuses of this day is the Generation 3 platform. In my opinion, this really is the one vehicle or vehicles, this platform, that's going to take Tesla from under a trillion dollar company back to a multi-trillion dollar company over the next five to 10 years. This is not just some hopium. You may remember this pie chart that was initially shared by Pierre Farragut. It just tells us what type of total addressable market Tesla has at each different average selling price. So far to date, Tesla's average sale price has been in the neighborhood of $50,000, meaning so far, Tesla has only had access to around 20% of the vehicle market in the United States. These numbers will of course vary slightly globally, but it'll at least get us in the right neighborhood. And so this may not happen right away, but whenever Tesla can offer a $25,000 vehicle, that's going to take them all the way around to over here, meaning they have effectively unlocked 74% of the entire US auto market. Because as you can see, about 26% of the US auto market is at a price point under $25,000. So keep these two numbers in mind. So far to date, Tesla has had about 20% of the US market. And with this new generation three platform, whenever they can get that rolling, they could then have access to up to 74%. Here we have a chart of 2022 auto sales. And the column I want you to focus on is year to date, which would end up being the entire year for 2022. If we scroll down to the bottom, you will see the total US passenger light car sales for 2022 were about 13.7 million in the United States. What this means is that so far, Tesla's actual addressable market in the United States has been about 20% of this number every year, which is about 2.7 million vehicles. Now, if we assume that Tesla can deliver with this generation three platform a vehicle costing around $25,000, we would multiply this number by that 0.74 to give Tesla a new addressable market of about 10.1 million vehicles every year. Now, obviously that's not the number of vehicles Tesla is going to sell because one, they need to be able to produce more and two, there are other people competing for this market share. However, the point stands that Tesla's addressable market could nearly 5X with this new generation three platform just in the United States. And if you look at Tesla's investor relations page, you'll see they're classifying this event next week as an investor event, the last one of which would have been Tesla's battery day back in 2020. Now I will say usually these shareholder meetings that were held the last two years, those can be somewhat dry. We usually don't get a ton of new information, but these investor events can be pretty exciting. Most of you will remember that at Autonomy Day and Battery Day, we got a ton of new awesome information. So I do hope that next week can live up to those past events. Some of you already know that I always keep a pair of Vessies in my footwear collection because where I live right now is cold, wet, and rainy for multiple months out of the year, but I do not like wearing boots. Vessies are actually 100% waterproof, and yes, they're the sponsor of this video, but either way, check this out. I fully submerged them in water to put them to the test, and as you can see from the video, this is not some marketing gimmick. The paper towel that I put in the toe stayed dry the entire time. That's because they're made from a Dymatex material, which helps keep you cool in the summer and warmer in the winter. Most importantly though for me, they're lightweight, breathable, and comfortable, allowing my foot to actually function as intended. They've become the perfect shoe to easily put on and take off for going for walks with Ashley or running to Wegmans and out for errands. The insoles are also removable so you can insert your own orthotics. 
So if you'd like to say goodbye to soggy socks forever, you can head to vessi.com slash electrified to get 15% off your entire order. The link is in the description below. There are other reasons my expectations have been slowly creeping up as well. So Tesla Scope put out this thread on Twitter and gave us some good information. First, Tesla's internal goal is for all vehicle models to be delivered with hardware 4 by the end of this summer, including those made in China and Berlin. When it comes to all of the talk around additional cameras, they've confirmed with employees working on the line that these are for future expansion. AKA, none of the actively produced sexy lineup will have additional cameras, but they are already receiving an upgraded camera in the form of resolution. The Cybertruck being produced this year and in production semis will be the first vehicles to have the additional cameras and hardware for from the start. And these new upgraded cameras, not the additional cameras, will gradually transition to include the Model 3 and Y before the end of this year. The reason these Hardware 4 vehicles have not been delivered yet is reportedly because the software to support Hardware 4 is still being finalized before deliveries are set to go next month. Engineers at Tesla have a deadline to achieve this by March. Tesla is aware of customer frustrations regarding some missing autonomy features for the cars that do not have the ultrasonic sensors because the Tesla Vision system has not yet replaced those features. These concerns are expressed often to service centers in North America. When it comes to the FSD beta, Tesla has rekindled conversations with regulators in the EU and the UK. The new goal is 2024 to meet proposal dates. However, it sounds like there could be an accelerated timeline if the performance in North America goes well. The Model 3 and Y are set to receive a handful of exterior and interior changes, including new mirrors and a tri-band GPS, which will allow Tesla to eliminate the need for various sensors, including external temperature. Many other refinements underway, but they can't talk about them yet. But here's the granddaddy of them all. Tesla Scope says Elon Musk will make one of the most significant Tesla announcements in many years at Investor Day on March 1st. So whether you're going in person or watching at home, you will absolutely want to clear your schedule. So between those data points and the opportunity to learn more about Master Plan 3, Extreme Scale, everything going on with Hardware 4, maybe a Cybertruck announcement, I'm not gonna lie, I'm super, super excited for this event. And here's a clip from Monroe Live on Tesla future-proofing themselves with Hardware 4. You noted that this board got larger, and yes. Tesla really has been known to really be an efficient utilizer of their board space. Now look at this board, it's pretty much maxed out, Hardware mm -hmm. 3. So do you think this Hardware 4 board is the first step allowing hardware 4.5 and hardware 5. Look at all this empty space right here. Mm. I feel like they may have designed it for the future. Yeah, what that's a great, there? no, that's a good observation. Uh, obviously, the tooling for the module, uh, housing, the cooling plate, the, the space claim within the vehicle. Once they lay that out, hopefully they'll be able to maintain that like they did with the hardware 3 and 2.5 for a long time. And yes, uh, with a board change, they could add other componentry here, you know, depending on what the future needs require. So yeah, I believe that could be their forward thinking strategy. Looks like the full video will be dropping tomorrow. Some folks have been saying that Tesla may have secretly revealed the new compact vehicle via some of these sketches that were seen in the pre-roll for the video last night. To that, I would just say be very careful because Tesla undoubtedly has plenty of sketches and this may be getting us on the right track, but we're going to find out here hopefully within the next week, so let's just be patient. Whole Mars gave us an update on the FSD Beta V11 saying that not all employees have it yet. Some are still running .69. What this means is that the wider release rollout may not be as imminent as some people were expecting. AKA, rather than a few hours or days, it could still be a few weeks away. We did get some new video footage of the Cybertruck with the suspension still lifted, trying to get up over this little baby curb so that they could park the Cybertruck for that event last night at the new HQ in Palo Alto. If you fast forward, you see these little wooden ramps that they use to help the Cybertruck get up. Of course, they're just being very, very cautious with this prototype build of the Cybertruck. In the real world, once it's production version, hopefully the Cybertruck can get up on this platform very easily with no ramps. 
And here's one different perspective. This video was taken by the kilowatts. And one more Cybertruck video for good measure, a very quick one just glancing across the front of the Cybertruck at the event last night with the light bar up front. This website, Tesla-Info, has been getting more attention as of late. They've just been aggregating inventory data and separating it by region. I just wanna point out what's been going on in Europe because I think some people have been a little bit concerned about it. If you scroll down and you look, you can see we haven't had consistent data points until about January 16th. They were a bit more sporadic prior to that. Since that time, of course, there's been a steady uptrend of Tesla inventory for the Model 3 and the Model Y in Europe, AKA the number of Model 3 or Model Y vehicles that are actually in inventory is really not 2000 for each variant, but it would be something closer to 2000 times five or 10. Troy Teslike has been arguing that at least part of this rise in inventory is due to people being upset with the lack of ultrasonic sensors and the accompanying features that Tesla Vision has not yet replaced. Looking at Tesla's blog post on this very issue, it's really only Park Assist, Auto Park, Summon, and Smart Summon that those features have yet to be delivered with Tesla Vision, not equipped with ultrasonic sensors. All of this just to say, at least for me, I think there are way too many factors that would go into something like this. Sure, that may have some impact, but when it comes to delivery waves and Tesla managing inventory and production from Berlin and Shanghai, while also adjusting production to meet the new lower prices for most regions, there's just a lot going on. So I will wanna see another month of data before I start to worry about any sort of inventory levels in Europe. We know Tesla has many demand levers that it can pull at any time. So it's good to be aware of data like this, but in my book, definitely not a concern, at least not yet. The Kilowatt spotted another Project Highland Model 3. Let me know if you guys see anything different, but for me, the only thing I'm really noticing on the front would be these new wheels, which may or may not actually make it to production. Some people were saying maybe the flare for this camera housing actually extended back more on this driver's side door, but to me, that looks more like a reflection. And of course, you wouldn't be able to go over where the door hinges anyway. And in terms of the back view, the only thing I saw were these wires that are seemingly running inside the back of the car and are taped to the exterior. What that could be for, honestly, I really do not know. Here we have Lordstown pausing deliveries and production. This, of course, for the Endurance pickup, which they've only made 31 units available for sale, and they've already voluntarily recalled 19 of those vehicles delivered to customers. No timeline on when they will lift this pause in production and deliveries. The reason is performance and quality issues with some components. Stellantis now has plans to make its push bringing EVs to the North American market after seeing some success in the European market. Stellantis already has 23 BEVs on the market and they're expected to double that portfolio by the end of 2024. The first Stellantis EV EVs to make it to the North American market are set to be a Ram truck and two different Jeep EVs. Ram is also bringing a commercial ProMaster BEV in a deal with Amazon to be unveiled in the first half of this year. But this is the Ram 1500 EV that's set to make its North American debut in quarter four of 2024. They're also planning to bring this Jeep Recon to the market that's supposed to have completely removable doors and of course is based on the Wrangler model. In addition to the recon, they're planning to bring this Wagoneer S, they're calling it, which seems to be a more luxury SUV. Of course, they say they're targeting 400 miles of range. I would just add the operative word is targeting. And did you guys see this? I honestly am not sure what to make of it, but we have VW asking employees to cycle through an escape room experience with collaborative games and puzzles to ease anxiety over job security as they transition to making EVs. Employees need to solve riddles as they move through spaces themed on electricity and battery technology, and some of these spaces require tech skills to crack codes and find clues in lockers. In fairness, we don't have enough data to say if this is a waste of time or something that could be pretty creative and enjoyable for the employees, 
although I do feel like it's something that I could never see Elon implementing. Don't forget to check out Bessie linked below to take advantage of that discount if you're interested. You can find me on Twitter at DylanLoomis22. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. We did get some new video footage of the Cybertruck with the suspension still lifted, trying to get up over this little baby curb so that they could park the Cybertruck for that event last night at the new HQ in Palo Alto. 